Welcome to Data Demystified. I'm Jeff Gallick, and this is my series of tutorial videos on how to use SPSS to work with data. In this video, I'm going to show you how to conduct and interpret the results of a single variable linear regression. As always, we'll be using the YouTube Viewing Habits survey that I created, and you can find both a link to the data file and a video tutorial of the data below. Linear regression is probably our most useful statistical tool for understanding the relationship between a number of variables. I have a series of videos that will build your understanding of how to use regression, and we're gonna start with the simplest form, single variable linear regression. For this, we're gonna have two continuous variables, one predicting another. In principle, this is actually just gonna be something like a correlation, but this is what we're gonna to need to actually build all of that knowledge for more sophisticated things like multivariable and multivariate regression. So in particular, we're gonna pick two variables that we can use here. The first one we're gonna use is going to be average opinion. This is the average opinion people hold of the YouTube platform, and that will be our outcome or dependent variable. And we're gonna predict that as a function of openness, which is a measure that I computed in a separate video, and that is the average response to the three items in the big five personality inventory that correlate with this personality dimension called openness. And we're gonna see if openness can predict average opinion. So to do that, we're gonna to go to regression, which is under analyze regression, linear, and we'll see this window open up. And the very first thing we need to do is define our variables. And so I'm gonna scroll down to the bottom and I'm gonna say average opinion is our dependent variable, it's the thing we are predicting, and openness is our independent variable, it's the thing we are predicting with. We do need to check a few assumptions to make sure that this is a viable regression to run, and so we'll have to check a few options to do that. Under the statistics menu, I like to check the confidence intervals option because it's nice to see that for our predictor estimates. And there are some other tests that we can run, but I'll keep things simple and not do that here. Under plots, the big ones that we really want are gonna be the histogram and the normal probability plot. That's our PP plot. That's gonna be one of our best ways to see if there is something called heteroscedasticity. If we had heteroscedasticity, that would be that the variance of the residuals of our regression are not constant across the predictor variable. And that's something we wanna check for and we can do that pretty quickly. Uh, another big one that we can look for is if we take the standardized residual output y and plot it against the standardized predictor, that'll be another way for us to look for this issue. So I'm gonna include that as well. So z resid, which is the standardized residual, plot it against z predictor. I'm gonna do one more thing in the save menu. I'm gonna actually save the unstandardized predicted values. What this is gonna do is save the predicted output at each level of our predictor variable. And we're gonna use that to subsequently plot our results. And we'll see what that looks like in a moment. And that's it. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit okay. And we'll take a look at what the output looks like. Okay, there's quite a bit here and I'm gonna walk you through everything so we can understand. Before we start with the model summaries, it's really worth taking a look at the bottom, which is where we test some of our assumptions. So I'm gonna scroll down here. One of the things we're looking for is a roughly normal distribution on the standardized residuals. And for the most part, that's true. There is this one pop over here, which we'd probably wanna investigate a little bit more carefully. But for the most part, this is fairly normal. We see that it is mostly mapped onto that black line, which is our line of normality. We can also look at our PP plot here, and what we're looking for in the most part is for the values, those dots, to line up as close to this diagonal as possible. And again, there's some violation here in that those values do deviate slightly from the line in a few cases, but for the most part, this is okay. So here, where we're looking at the relationship between the regression standardized predicted value and the regression standardized residual, what we're looking for is no obvious relationship between those two variables. In other words, we don't want to see a strong correlation going one way or another. In this case, this actually is less than ideal. It does look like there's a negative correlation right here, which would speak to an issue of heteroscedasticity, though admittedly it's not very strong. We do see that the spread here is pretty large. The spread here is also pretty large. So if there is heteroscedasticity in this case, it does appear to be minor. For the sake of this video, we're gonna assume that these assumptions are not violated just so we can understand how we would interpret our coefficients and how we would interpret a regression model if there were none of these issues in place. If in your case, there's strong violation of the heteroscedasticity assumption, you really should reconsider whether this is the appropriate model for you to run. So let's scroll back up to the top. And the first thing we see here is our model summary. This is basically telling us how well does this model predict the output variable. And the thing to look for really is this R square and the adjusted R square. R square basically says how much variance can be explained of our outcome variable, in this case, average opinion, as a function of our predictors. In this case, it's just the one predictor openness. And it's not a lot, it's a 3%. So 3% of all the variation in average opinion can be explained by openness. It's not a lot, but it is what it is. When we're dealing with real data, we sometimes have not particularly strong relationships and we just have to live with that reality. Now, the adjusted R-square is actually a slightly better measure of R-square of fit because what it does is it penalizes that R-square measure based on how many variables are in your model. 
If you have a model with as many variables, for example, as you do data points, that model is going to perfectly fit your data because you have infinite flexibility, but that's not very interesting. So it just R squared takes that penalty into account. It basically says, okay, if I have so many variables that this model is potentially overfitting, we should really penalize ourselves on how much fit this could really explain. So adjusted R squared here is very similar to R squared because we only have that one variable. The next thing we have is our ANOVA table, which is basically looking at this R value, which is just the R in the R squared, and it's seeing, is that value significant? If we see that this is a statistically significant result right here, we can conclude that that model overall is a significant predictor, albeit not a particularly strong one, given this R squared and adjusted R squared value. But the most interesting stuff really happens down here in the coefficients table. What this is telling us, in particular this second row, the one that reads openness, is that the relationship between openness and average opinion is positive and statistically significant. So how do I determine that? What this coefficient right here says is that for every unit change of openness, how much can we expect average opinion to change? So as openness goes up by one value, average opinion goes up by 0.154. And that is a significant predictor because if I look over here, my T statistic for that particular prediction is 5.502, and the corresponding p-value is very, very small. It's less than 0 0.000. If we move over a little bit, we know that that prediction, this, the 95% confidence interval around it, is that it is somewhere between 0.099 and 0.209. So that 0.154 sits nicely in the middle over there. So again, this is a very simple model, but it still tells us that there is a relationship and a positive one between these two variables. What's useful, though, is to be able to visualize this particular model. And to do that, we can actually go back to our data file, and we have this new variable that we created called pre-1. This is the predicted, or the, in this case, unstandardized predicted values at every level of openness. And we can plot that using a scatter plot. Now, there's a couple of ways to do a scatter plot in SPSS. And I personally like the legacy view because I find the, the chart builder or the plot builder that they've put out in newer models is really difficult to understand. So if you go up to graphs, legacy dialog, scatter plot, you can define a new scatter plot. You can define a new scatter plot. And in this case, we're going to plot the predicted values on our y axis and the openness on our x-axis. So what this is going to say is what would we predict that the average opinion will be at every level of openness in our data set. So if we click OK, we'll get this plot down here. This is our regression line. This is saying that for any level of openness, our model predicts the following level of average opinion. What's worth noting is regression models like this can only say something in the range of our predictor variables for which we have data. So this line goes on forever in the upper, to the upper right and to the bottom left, but we have no data where openness is 8, 9, or 10. In fact, that's not possible in this particular case because openness is a constrained scale from 1 to 7. But even if it were an open-ended variable, we really couldn't say anything about how much openness predicts average opinion outside of this range 1 to 7 because it doesn't include those data. For all we know, this is a nonlinear relationship afterwards and this skyrockets up or pivots down. We just don't know. But for this particular case, between one and seven, we have a nice prediction of what average opinion will be as a function of openness. And the more open someone is, the more they seem to value YouTube. This is the point of the video where I'm gonna ask you to pause and try this for yourself. In particular, why don't you try this? Why don't you try to predict average opinion as a function of one of these other variables? In particular, let's say agreeableness. So take a look and see if you can predict average opinion as a function of agreeableness, see if some of those violations of heteroscedasticity are there or not, and see what relationship, if any, there is, and plot that. I'll pause the video and I'll show you how I do that in just a moment. Okay, hopefully you've had a chance to try that yourself, so I'm gonna do it right here. So I'm gonna go up to Analyze, Regression Linear, and all I'm gonna do is take out openness and include agreeableness. Everything else is gonna stay the same, but just to remind you, under statistics, I ask for the confidence interval because I find that useful. Under plots, I'm gonna ask for the histogram and the normal probability plot, as well as I'm going to put on the y-axis the standardized or Z residuals, and on the x-axis the standardized or the Z predicted values. And then of course I'm gonna save my unstandardized predicted values so I can actually graph that. So let's click OK and see what happens. So first let's check our assumptions. Again, that looks reasonably normal, which is fine. 
The PP plot looks reasonably fine too. Those are mostly along the diagonal. And looking at our graph of residuals, uh, we see again, for the most part, there's not an issue. There, there does appear to be some problem over there here on this end in that there is a much tighter distribution of standardized residuals compared to over here. So maybe there's some heteroscedasticity, but for the sake of this video, again, we're just gonna assume that things are fine. Scrolling back up to the top, we find that our adjusted R square is a little bit better than previously. Actually, it's 0.039, so slightly better. We can predict about 3.9% of the variation in average opinion. That is statistically significant overall. We see that right here, our model is significant. And our coefficient, again, has a positive and significant relationship. So for every unit increase in agreeableness, we increase average opinion by 0.186 units. And that is significant. We see that right with a t-value of 6.393 and a significance level that is very, very small. We also have an 95% confidence interval here for those of you that would like to see that. To visualize that relationship, we go up to graph, legacy graph, scatter dot, simple scatter plot, and instead of openness here and pre one, we're gonna have pre two, that's our new variable that was created just now from the second regression. And we're gonna include agreeableness as our x-axis variable. And we'll click okay. And again, we see this nice linear relationship because this is a linear model. As agreeableness goes up, average opinion goes up as well. And we see that right here. That's it for this video. I hope you found this useful. And if you have any questions, please comment below and I'll be sure to reply as quickly as I can. Aside from these tutorials, I'm on a mission to equip everyone with the information they need to thrive in our data-rich world. If you'd like to learn not just the mechanics of analysis, which these video tutorials focus on, but also learn the intuition behind the analysis you're performing, I strongly suggest you check out the other intuition-focused videos on this channel where I take the jargon out of statistics and data science and help you build a deep, intuitive understanding behind all the analysis that you're performing. I'll put a link below to a playlist of the videos that focus on just this. Finally, please take a moment to like the video, subscribe to this channel, and click that little bell icon so that you don't miss out on any new content that I put out. Thanks for watching.